Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about Tears of the Kingdom again. I know, right? What a shocker. I actually was trying to make a non-Zelda video today, or at least a combination news video where maybe if there's Zelda stories, it's just part of a bigger pack of news. Unfortunately for me, everything is Zelda, or maybe fortunately because you guys love that Zelda news, but I'm, I'm trying to like mix in other Nintendo news. They're just isn't anything happening, and the news surrounding Tears of the Kingdom just won't stop. So today we got to talk about two big stories, something that A.G. Aonuma told us about the game that for some of you might have been frustrating, for me is actually quite brilliant because most video game studios don't get the opportunity to do what the Zelda team got to do over the last year. And then the other thing has to do with, well, what cartridge size are they using exactly and why and its implications possibly on the price point and on Nintendo moving forward. Before I get into that news, I just want to say, hey, we're on our road to 133,000 subscribers. We have a giveaway going on down in the pinned comment or the description for a Hylian Shield replica and some other things because you know what? As much as this channel keeps growing, I like to reinvest in the community. Also, guys, I'm turning 37 this year, which is as old as the actual Zelda series, and I'm still chasing my dreams here, being a full-time YouTuber that can support their family and live a pretty good life, and you guys have helped me get to the position where I technically am working full-time on YouTube right now. So thank you guys so much. If you want to continue to help support my dream and help me show my children and inspire maybe others out there to continue to chase their dreams, no matter how old you are, I do think it's important to have a dream and continue to reach for the stars. Go ahead and just subscribe to the channel. That's all I'm really asking. I'm not asking for your money. I'm not asking for anything other than stuff you can do absolutely for free. All right, guys, let's get into the Zelda news. Now, here we have our, our first bit of news, and we actually get this from Spawn Wave. So Spawn Wave is a fellow YouTuber out there. I'm sure you guys have heard of him. If you haven't, he posts a news video uh, Monday through Friday called News Wave. He has his Spawncast podcast every Saturday. And on weekends, he tends to drop... Uh, little bonus videos. Sometimes he has unboxings or teardowns of things. And he also has a Spawnway Plus channel where he goes into individual news topics like we do. Now, what's interesting about his channel over the weekend is he dropped a video where he took apart the Nintendo Switch Tears of the Kingdom cartridge. Now, I'm not willing to do this because I don't have the proper tools to, uh, you know, basically open it without potentially breaking the cartridge. So he opened it up because he wanted to examine to see if Nintendo actually used a 32 gigabyte cartridge with Tears of the Kingdom. Now remember, Tears of the Kingdom was originally listed at like 18.2, 18.3 gigabytes, and then they reduced it about a month before launch down to 16 gigabytes is what it said officially on the website. We found out later it was actually 15.9, and then there was a 300 megabyte or so day one patch. Now, what's interesting about that 15.9 size is that is below 16 gigabytes. So some people thought Nintendo reduced the size of the game, potentially cut content so they could fit it onto a 16 gigabyte cartridge. Now, I noted back then it doesn't actually make sense. It only makes sense if you don't know anything about how NAND flash memory works. Flash memory, whether it is NAND flash or your M.2 SSDs, your SATA SSD drives, doesn't really matter. Any sort of solid state drive or solid state storage requires extra headroom in the storage for redundancy. If you do not allow that redundancy to exist, the drive will actually fail. So they got to leave space. So when you see oh, there is a 128 gigabyte SSD, you're not actually going to have 128 gigabytes of space. You might have 120 gigabytes of space because they got to leave headroom in there for how SSDs work. So when we're talking about, oh, a 16 gigabyte cartridge, there's not actually 16 gigabytes of space. It's probably more like 13 gigabytes of space. That being said, uh, when you're talking about this, I always knew they had to use a bigger size. But the question was, are they really using 32 gigabytes? Were they somehow using an 18 or a 20 gigabyte? Did they like use some custom size to try to save money? However, manufacturing-wise, usually a custom size is more expensive. And it turns out that at least according to everything that SpawnWave could uncover, they are indeed using a 32 gigabyte cartridge. Now, this isn't the only Nintendo Switch game to use a 32 gigabyte cartridge. There are plenty of them out there, specifically from third-party companies, but this is the first 
first party Nintendo game to use a 32 gigabyte cartridge. And obviously it's being mass produced, right? Tens of millions of these cartridges are being mass produced for Tears of the Kingdom. So then you have to sit back and go, well, what does this all mean? One, it obviously means that the cost of 32 gigabyte cartridges probably will come down slightly over time for third parties. However, I believe it was Nate Drake who noted over on the Family Board forums that the cost for Nintendo is about 14 bucks per cartridge at 32 gigabytes. I'm not quite sure if those numbers are 100% accurate. Even to me, that seems like that might be a little bit more expensive than what Nintendo can probably get. This would require deep knowledge of Nintendo's at cost and cost of materials and their actual contracts of manufacturers. I was thinking probably closer to like eight to ten dollars per cartridge for Nintendo, but who really knows, right? What we can say though is it's expensive and. For some, this justifies that $70 price point because this is Nintendo's first game to need a 32 gigabyte cartridge. It's more expensive, pass that cost on to consumers, ergo $70. I will also say that I don't really think that's the reason for the $70 price hike, but at least it gives you a logical perspective at that. We've seen third-party companies using cartridges charge more on Nintendo Switch because of cartridge costs. So it's not unheard of for companies to upcharge over cartridge costs. That being said, it is interesting to see, and it does seem to me uh, potentially to normalize a 32 gigabyte cartridge moving forward if Nintendo's mass producing them now, or if they're going to mass produce similar cartridges like that for third parties on the next system. This is good news. Also, Macronix, by the way, announced a new 96 layer, uh, you know, NAND flash that they're working on, which, by the way, Nintendo uses Micronix. So this, or Micronix or whatever. So yeah, Nintendo potentially could see. Uh, even better NAND flash available for their next system. Not necessarily cheaper NAND flash, though. But NAND flash technology is moving forward where Nintendo could get, you know, 64, 128, etc. in that similar form factor moving forward. But again, it's still going to be stupidly expensive, and I don't know how many people are going to be willing to actually use that. Now, we get to our next story. Let's get to this tweet put out by Gene Park, and then I read the article just to confirm. This was an interview conducted by the Washington Post, and in this tweet, it says, I.J. Onuma said when he announced in March 2022 a delay for Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, the game was actually complete. The last year of development was spent making sure the physics of the game worked. So polish, polish, polish. Now, this is something that games today are often very criticized for, AAA games especially, that there's a lack of polish. It just, the game has so many bugs, so many breaks, you're quickly trying to patch. We saw this with Scarlet and Violet, which still isn't patched correctly, that games are launching in what feels like an incomplete, broken state, and then they feel like, we'll just patch it later. And the Zelda team didn't do that. The Zelda team, when they delayed the game, it wasn't because the game needed more work. So the game was actually, you know, quote-unquote, developed in less than five years. However... Uh, they needed time to polish the game because one thing this game is being praised for by developers across the board, like we've seen this over and over again, is the elements of the physics combined with the elements of the ultra hand ability, especially let alone recall and others and how it just works and things don't break. A lot of them are, they're finding their minds just boggled. Not the idea to attempt to have such systems in a game, but to have those systems just work it just works like you don't have any fear of anything breaking because it just works and why is that the case because the zelda team was given a full year to make sure when players went hands-on with this game that it just works that is something the rest of the industry should really take note on is if you're making a triple a game maybe take a year to polish the damn thing a lot of games, and this is just based on talking to some developers. I'm not saying this is true of every game, but a lot of AAA games that I've you know, been in knowledge of development, sometimes they get less than three months to polish a game. And that's often not even close to enough QA time, development time, to really patch up some of the major bugs. And then you end up launching a game that's just fundamentally broken. Whereas then you have Tears of the Kingdom come out and it's using all these brilliant uh, brilliantly hard-to-code development sequences, and everything just works, and you're leaving other AAA developers going, how 
the hell did they pull this up? Well, because they were given the proper time to do it. And, you know, I know there was that infamous quote that may or may not be from Shigeru Miyamoto about delayed games eventually being good and blah, blah, blah. We all know that that's not true either. But it's interesting just thinking about uh, Tears of the Kingdom in the context that uh, it was just given the proper time to do it right. And I I, I got to give Nintendo kudo for that because... Yeah, they could have dropped it last year. It might have had some bugs. Heck, it could have been last holiday. It might have had some more bugs, but they really took advantage of that development time to create a super polished game. And yeah, we know there's glitches, duplication glitches, and other stuff that make it in there. There'll always be glitches in games, but those glitches are triggered typically intentionally and aren't as easy to trigger by accident. So... You guys are awesome. I want to thank you so much for being here. Let me know what you think about today's Zelda news, I guess, at this point. We're getting Zelda news almost daily from various interviews and other places, and uh, we'll see what tomorrow brings. Uh, what I can say is we will be live streaming the PlayStation Showcase that's happening on Wednesday, so you can look forward to that as we keep up to date with everything happening in the world of Sony. Yes, we are a Nintendo YouTube channel, but we always end up live streaming all of these Sony events, all of the Xbox events, all that stuff, because we do like to keep up to date with everything going on. While we have our biases for Nintendo, I am a gamer on the whole that enjoys everything, and I feel like even if you're not one of those people and you only play Switch and Nintendo games, that it's still good to keep up on what's going on in the rest of the industry, just just for a peace of mind. It's like, hey, what is going on? Because who knows? Maybe there's something that would interest you that you wouldn't otherwise know about if you weren't paying attention. Thank you guys for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next video.